Well, let's talk about the world-famous Dynamite Report. It opened up with Brian Danielson and his gigantic eye patch coming out to do commentary. He did a fine job on commentary. Do you think that's the same eye patch that he had back in ROH? Impossible. Hmm. I don't know. So maybe he has. Bigger. Maybe maybe he has a whole uh, a whole bunch of eye patches. Oh, like Muda mask. That would be cool. So it opened up with John Moxley, Jay Lethal, Continental Classic, and I thought this was a very good match. And you know what do you expect? It's John Moxley and Jay Lethal worked over Moxley's leg for a while. Big spot at the end. Moxley puts him in the choke, and Lethal tries to pummel his bad leg, and Moxley traps the arm. Now he can't pummel. Lethal is forced to tap. Moxley, at the moment, in the lead with six points. Although we'll soon have a bunch of people with six points. Then we had Eddie Kingston cutting a promo. He said, I knew it'd be tough, but I might have come in here arrogant. Thinking I put my belts on the line and I deserve to win. Nobody deserves anything. Now I've got Brian next and I'm behind the eight ball. But I'm not going back. Humble in victory, humble in defeat. And then they go to Brian on commentary, and he goes, I broke my orbital bone in two places, but I'm going into this tournament on fire! I'm not going to be humble in victory or defeat! I'm coming to win this whole thing. He's going to stomp in Eddie's head on <laughs> Saturday point, night. At the Eddie Kingston that we all know and love is coming back with that gas can in his hand. He, he's not going to be able to hold this up forever. And we had Tony Schiavone with the Sting's final match thing with Ric Flair. It's what like, was he wearing? He's wearing one of your suits, wasn't he? Man, they love they love Ric Flair, but uh, it's like <laughs> first they're yes. interviewing Sting, and man, Flair's just standing there and he's not even reacting, and he's got sunglasses on. I'm like, I hope this guy's not sleeping right now. And then they go to no, him. He's and, not on the ring. Apron. And he just starts. He just says whatever comes into his brain. And uh, it's been I a problem know. with him over the years. Well, I mean, you on know, TV shows. Yeah, I guess life. it has. But I mean, when he started talking about how they didn't rehearse the match, I was like, you couldn't tape this thing again. They have too much respect for the guy. Just let it go. Woo! Roosh and Mark Briscoe in a tournament match. Golly gee! God you know, I really got to think. You know, this is going to be like people are going to. They won't even be able to wrap their heads around the possibility, but. I'm trying to figure out what my favorite match of the week was. Because, man, that Ilya Dragunov match on NXT, golly, that match was so awesome. And the main event was like a different kind of awesome. You know, that was more a traditional pro wrestling kind of awesome. But uh, this Roosh and Mark Briscoe match, I mean, uh, I don't know. This match ruled. It was like, it was like two Roosh's facing each other. Because hey hey, two Mark Briscoes. Either way, well you know no I, no I won't say that okay because Mark Briscoe does have two speeds okay Mark Briscoe can go in there and not be an absolute complete maniac going fifty five thousand <laughs> miles an hour. Tis Roosh true. only has one speed, okay. <laughs> so this actually was two Rooshes in the ring with each other, and it was awesome. And the one the actual Roosh, the shoot Roosh. He killed him with a drop kick in the corner for the pin. This match absolutely ruled. I think this was the best match in the tournament so far. Although the the Brody King match with uh, um, Eddie on Collision had also ruled. Then we had a Tony Storm segment. Does everyone still love these? Just out of curiosity. Well, just seems like it's uh, you know tailed off a little bit. Same old, same old. Well. A lot yeah. more RJ City in this mix now. I wonder how many casts of characters we're going to get in this thing. We got Mariah May now in. We got RJ City. We got Luther. Well, maybe oh, my God. I'm about to bigger. lose it. Remember when Jingo quit because I chewed him out so bad? I'm about to <laughs> yes. do it again. He goes, Why? Brian manages a DBR NXT every week. Interesting. Yeah, you absolute moron. I explained this last night. NXT, it always catches the overrun. Yes. Every time. Yes. Not once ever, whether you know the why? overrun is three minutes, nine minutes, or 16 minutes. Tell Not once why. ever has YouTube TV cut off the overrun. Ever. That's the point. The point is, it can be done. Because it happens every week on NXT. But for some damn reason, anytime AEW goes over, it cuts it off. 
So it ain't a problem with me. It ain't a problem. It's a problem with AW. Get a hold of these people and figure it out. I agree. I have YouTube TV. Figure it's okay, it DJ. I'm not mad at you. You should have deleted that. What a stupid comment. Anyway, where were we? MGF did a promo. Yeah. Total old school babyface promo. Puts over Samoa Joe as a man who broke the mold. Because we didn't have large men in main event positions before Samoa Joe. <laughs> Guy's born in 1996. What do you want? They lace the new meat, apparently. So, uh, anyway, he said he's going to beat this guy at the pay He's a hell of a babyface promo. And then yeah. the lights went out. And uh, I don't know if it was supposed to be the actual devil or just three of his, four of his henchmen. But they start beating up MJF. And then Joe runs down to make the save. And then we add, like, I thought my TV broke. The screen went black. And you couldn't hear anything. It was, like, completely silent as well. And I'm waiting. And I'm waiting. And I'm... I actually push the screen to go, is the time actually moving forward? <laughs> and finally the words appear on the screen. Somebody cue tape! They challenge MJF and Samoa Joe to a tag next week. The scripts wrote that. And Max accepts and Joe's angry because he wants him to heal up. And Max is not healing up. And then, after the break, the announcers say, whoever that devil is had the ability... To break into the audio and video system. It's a bad excuse. So, and for those of you wondering, like, I ain't going to make a bet because I got to take a break after uh, I actually, I'm like Vince McMahon when he guaranteed and then that one day he failed. The devil's not Britt Baker. I don't know who it is, but I'd be very, very surprised. Like, everyone's thinking this is all an angle and she's going to be the uh, devil. Don't hold your breath. It's, In the forum, I believe that they were analyzing the mask and seeing if it had feminine enough features where it was... Oh, bigger. my God. K k you people. Come on. Your people. Your forum. But, you know, me and Dave were talking about this last night, and it suddenly hit me that you knew who had a hacker gimmick was Sammy Callahan. You know who's been yeah. backstage quite a bit at uh, AW of late? Sammy Callahan. Yeah. Ain't gonna be Sammy Callahan either, I wouldn't think. Could be Callahan. Could be Cole. Could, could be, be Jungle idea. Boy. But uh, I would not expect it to be a Britt Baker. I think you got a problem if it's not. Well, here's the thing: I, I, people are going to be disappointed if it's Jungle Boy. I don't know if it's Nick Nemeth. If it's Nick if Nemeth, it's, look, if it's Sammy Callahan, if it's somebody who we haven't seen before, it better be to a level. You know what I'm saying? And I think anything else is going to be maybe a little bit disappointing. Probably a lot disappointing. And we had uh, Wardlow beating Air Fox. You know the drill. Top Flight in Action Andretti versus the Hardys and Brothers A. This is one of those things. I don't want to get mad yet, okay? I don't want to get mad yet. But I thought Top Flight in Action Andretti were a great, fun team. I thought it's something for Action Andretti to do so he's not just getting buried every week and beaten. And I thought, man, let these guys go on a, on a tear and, and challenge for those trios titles. That'd be a lot of fun. And then the very next segment... Penta, Commander, and Vikingo show up and challenge him. And I thought, actually, you know what? I guess it's possible they could beat him. But that certainly wasn't what I thought was going to happen when I saw those guys show up. But we'll see. I hope that the Andretti and the Martins do beat him. They should beat him. They should. That's my point. I mean, it's not But even... when these guys showed up, I thought, oh, man, they're going to have a great match and lose. I don't want uh, that. No. Then we had uh, Julia Hart and Emi Sakura. Mm -hmm. Have I ever mentioned how much I hate the house rules concept? It's ridiculous. I don't have time here. I'll do that tonight on the Brian and Vinny show. We had an uh, excellent uh, promo with Christian and... Uh, Adam Copeland? Yeah. I, I, people text me in the middle of the show. I know. I know. We had an excellent uh, Christian and... and So basically, here's the story. I'll, I'll review the entire thing on Brian and Vinny tonight. But essentially... Adam Copeland has challenged Christian to a TBS or TNT title match next week on, uh, <laughs> I'll get to that later. He's challenged him to a, uh, a match next week on Dynamite. Christian obviously doesn't want to do the match. So Christian comes out and he just pulls out the violin and he just goes on and on about all the stuff we used to do and we were family and we were friends and he finally pulls out the mother card. Your your dead mother would have wanted us to team together. 
And so Chris, you know, Ed, she just turns his back and he hangs his head. And of course, this absolute creepy little freak grabs a belt and he goes to hit old Adam and Adam punts him in the nuts. He says, nice try, dummy. Next week, that title's coming home with me. I couldn't do justice to this segment. Christian was so awesome. And Edge just looking at him was was so great. So uh, so this was incredible. So anyway, you know why uh, I, I had that look on my face while I was reviewing this? Because you were about to say the F word like Edge did? Not only do, uh, you know... Not only do I get the, all these people texting me as I'm trying to do it, a report here, but uh, I'm still getting emails. <laughs> They're still coming in. And uh, we are now at August of 2020. So that's that's good. We're getting closer to 2020. Yeah. But every day, some email comes in where I almost have a heart attack <laughs> before I realize it's from years ago. <laughs> but uh, this one, when it came in, I knew it was from years ago. But it is quite funny. If I may remind you all, it was August 5 of 2020, just three short years ago, that WWE named Nick Khan President and Chief Revenue Officer. Wow. What a career trajectory this man has had over the last three years. How Do about that? Remember? I kind of like this thing where I'm getting sent emails from a while ago because, like, Wow. Well, do you remember Really? Jinder how... lost that title right before Crown Jewel? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Anyway. Mario Sam Wilson out the door. That was, a, that was a controversial move at the time. Shake up and, of ideas. Seems to have paid off. So then we got the uh, main event. And Jay White and Swerve in a tournament match. Which, uh, although I did not see the end of the match. <laughs> what I did see, I thought was very good. And uh, they are. It's interesting. They're like uh, positioning Swerve in all the matches thus far. He's he's wrestling heels in all these matches. He's getting babyface reactions. Swerve's house chants are going crazy for his his deal. Yeah, Nana, tell people to get on their feet and start cheering. The devil just invaded this show. Who? Hey, your uh, thing got all glitchy. Oh. But uh, I've been told. You know, I, I report on this stuff. So my sources tell me that Swerve won this match. Mm -hmm. So he gained three points in the tournament. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the Join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click Join today and don't miss out.
Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.